Today on the channel, my dad is back and we go down a dangerous road with the NECA Ultimate, Herman Munster. The spirit of the will run forever. Kyle here and welcome back to the channel for another NECA Ultimate unboxing and review and today we've got the ultimate Herman Munster with a special guest my dad welcome back to the channel dad hey thanks for having me this looks kind of interesting uh, this is a little bit off the rails here and we're gonna get into it but if you're looking for a Herman Munster like this well you better head to your target stores and this is a part of the holothon so it is a limited exclusive for now to target but in the future Head on over to Entertainment Earth and use discount code KYLE and save 10% on in all in-stock items and anything over $59 does ship free. Gotta wow. get a deal out deal. there. But, but, this is a Target exclusive mm. currently, so if you're mm. on the hunt for this, uh, you have to go to Target. It just started hitting if you're watching this as it released. But I think week two of the Target Holothon out there is where you're going to find this. Mm. And Dad, you're on the fence here. You're not... Uh, uh, you're probably not looking at getting this one, but you're going to see. Maybe it'll change your mind. Maybe it won't. But you were nice enough to come here to take a look at Herman Munster with me on the uh, channel today. That's right. I, I'm kind of a Munster's traditionalist because I grew up in that era where, you know, monsters were popular in 64, 65. So I'm a little bit jaded in that I have fond memories of this sitcom yeah. of the hilarious Father Herman and Grandpa and Lily and Little Eddie and, and what have you. Yeah. And... and they were kind of modeled after 60s sitcoms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the father was yep. kind of this bumbling guy who made mistakes and whatnot. And, and uh, they, were, they were a family that uh, looked, through, looked at life through a very naive lens. I, I would yeah. almost equate them with the Beverly Hillbillies in that, it's you good. know, you're Jed Clampett, you go to Beverly Hills... Hey, that's a cement pond, not a swimming pool. And that's the way the monsters were. And they, they kind of moved a different from, lands. They moved from Transylvania or whatever. Yes. They moved. And yeah, exactly. It's different kind of lens, the same thing. Different outlook on life. And I always kind of think of myself as like a modern day Herman Munster around the house. I'm kind of bumbling and kind of joking around yeah. with the kids. I, I don't get too serious. Let my wife do all the yelling and screaming. Let Angie do that. That's kind of how I live my life. But you, you hit it in the nail on the head, I guess I would say. As so many properties. I mean, you could list a million properties that have been rebooted over the years right. and Hollywood trying to make money off the old stuff. Or there's a dollar to be made. We talk about it with Hasbro Mattel. If there's a dollar they can get out of your wallet, they're going to find a way. No different than Hollywood with some of these movies. They're going to try to rehash it and do stuff. And rarely does it work. And I would say the newer generation, like I think of my kids, they don't know anything about the monsters. Right. So they watch the monsters. They see this. This is their monsters. And let's be honest. Let's take that business step back or that TV step back, I guess we'd call it here. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this with uh, the girls. And that's what we're using as a, a control here. <laughs> But they will not sit and watch anything black and white. They're not going to do it. Even my wife, Angie, she refuses to watch anything in black and white for the most part. It's just she's not going to do it. Wow. So I, I think that's part of the problem with the old monsters being in black and white. Well, it's black and white. It's old. I'm not going to take the time. And I kind of feel that way about like 1930s movies that are really, really old and grainy. I just can't sit through that kind of stuff. But once you get to the you know 50s and up, things uh, clean up a little bit for me. But my daughters and stuff... <laughs> They're not going to watch old stuff. So it's a weird dynamic. And the monsters here, I don't know if it needed to be rebooted. But I will say it's a Rob Zombie movie. I did watch the movie. You did uh, not watch no. the movie. You have no plans to watch the movie. Well, it, it's <laughs> hard. It's hard. I agree with you. Remakes are not successful. No. And so what you do as a, as a movie uh, producer or whatever, you do a prequel. Because that takes you before time. I don't care if you're talking Game of Thrones or whatever. You want to do another one, do a prequel, because it's a whole different story. Yep. And then yep. maybe people can relate to that in, yep. a, in a whole different time. Very astute observation right there. Who's the <laughs> one uh, a class away from a minor in film? We, you. we keep oh. going back and forth, but I think he's closer to that minor in film. Yeah. And you didn't even take any of those classes. No, but he's exactly right. And I'm not going to spoil. We're not going to do a movie review or anything. Like I said, I watched okay. this movie once. It didn't change my life, obviously. But I'm glad I watched it. I always watch every Rob Zombie movie at least once. Devil's Rejects, greatest movie of all time, oh, ever. 
ever. Yes, you heard it here first. Uh, but I did watch this, and you're exactly right. It is a prequel, and I think that makes a little bit sense because if they just tried to go right into the show or like carry out one of the episodes a little bit longer, I don't think that would have worked. But uh, this was a prequel. It was campy. It was weird. It was kind of Rob Zombie uh, movie there without all the killing and all the cussing and the murder and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but it was worth a watch one time for me. I'm never going to watch it again. It was what it was. Obviously, you couldn't have the old actors or anything like no. that. But I did think this character here, the uh, Geico Caveman, whatever, whatever he his name is, I thought he did an okay job as Herman Munster, Fred Gwynn. Uh, like I said, it was worth watching one time for me. So that's uh, Dad and Kyle's uh, movie <laughs> review here today. But let's look at this figure, and let's look at the figure for what the figure is, and not what the history of the Munsters is, is what we'll try to do here. Very good. And then we'll go from Very there. Good. So as usual, we're going to take a look at the packaging, we're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. Ooh. We're going to talk about it, and we're going to see where it goes from there. And I'm sure it'll go off the rails. These always do <laughs> so so there's all herman monster so the first thing i noticed here is this packaging is absolutely phenomenal i think this color and i don't know if that's a picture or a painting or a mixture of both i'm not exactly sure what but this caught my eye from about a mile away on the store shelf check out my figure hunt you'll see me find this mm -hmm. but it blows me away i love the artwork or picture whatever you call it here it looks amazing on the side you got the monsters i would say familiar monster uh, font, I guess is what that is. On this side, there it is, kind of the same thing going on. Monsters at the top. And then the back, that's where the magic happens. We all know that on the back. Big glamour shots there. And then we even got the cross cell. Love a good cross cell. We got Grandpa coming. We got Lily coming. Uh, we'll see if you'll want to unbox those on the channel with me or not. I don't know. But uh, Lily, I'm not super excited for. But the Count, Grandpa, I'm excited for that one. And, and that's kind of the thing here is, obviously, take the monsters out of it. It is Frankenstein at the core. And if you're a Frankenstein, Stein collector, this is a pretty cool one to have on your shelf. No different than the Count Lily. That might be uh, up for uh, debate, I guess mm -hmm. we'll say. But on the back, it does say Ultimate Herman Munster. Uh, includes record, novel, Whoa. interchangeable heads and hands. Uh, love a good novel. What was the last novel you read? Uh, last week. <laughs> I, I, I'm reading uh, The Way of the Blade. It's a bunch of short oh, stories wow. about uh, wrestlers in the most bloodiest wrestling matches of all time. Oh, wow. That's the deep reading I read. And I read that. I read almost the whole thing on the plane except two chapters. Mm -hmm. I had to go to Texas. Uh, God bless Texas, as they do say down there. But there it is in there. Now we're going to get old Herman out of the package here. You ready for this? I'm ready. Are we ready? I'm ready. Are you excited? I'll Very give you much. that. This yeah. is the old uh, Fred Gwynn grimace <laughs> grimace That's yeah call. yeah exactly he's Classic got that right reason. the rest of it is he does and i thought he got the voice okay i didn't think it was no. terrible on the voice i don't know but what was your first munsters experience while i try to cut him out of here well you know there was some hype to it in the 60s before it came on and then uh, it, it just kind of flowed with some of the fads of the time which Going back and revisiting Universal Monsters and all of that. Now, you the, said, I think, one time, that was when they were starting to show those Universal Monsters on they TV. Were, so they were trying to take the popularity of the rise of Universal right. Monsters with your young generation at the time. And the Addams Family was a was a counterpart to the Monsters, and they were very popular, too. What but, uh, did you prefer, Addams Family or Monsters? Uh, the Monsters, because you had the familiar Universal yeah. Monsters in yep. there, where the, the Addams Family were kind of a different breed. Now, I've seen every episode. Like most classic TV shows of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 80s most likely. I've seen about every episode. I've seen that was I'm very OCD like that. I had to see every episode. So I did see every episode of the Monsters, Adam's Family and stuff, yeah. and I always preferred the Monsters as well. Yeah. I believe the Monsters only ran for like one season or something like that. It was short, one to two, and then yeah, and a movie. And the the movie Monsters, Monsters go come home, home, come home they, or go they home. They go go home. I think uh, see you later. It's when they were, went to England. Mm. They didn't inherit it in the see state later. or whatever. Yeah, and. It didn't last long, unfortunately, no. the Munsters. But I think a lot of people think of it like, oh, it had this long run and stuff right. off the side. See you later. See you later. Twist well, that was eyes. a fad that didn't last long. It maybe, you know, it started like in 63, 4, 5, and then it was kind of over and done with. And I don't think it was reviewed very well either. I don't think at the time the critics yeah. liked it, but I think the kids liked it. Right. In a lot of ways, like uh, the kids loved the monkeys back in the day. <laughs> now, you true. hated the monkeys TV show, didn't you? It wasn't for you. Well, I, you know, I could... 
understand what they were doing, and it was successful, and it sold a lot of records. But uh, at the time, people kept pointing out they aren't real musicians; they're oh. just actors. And I, and I argue that. To and the they, end. they morphed into. Good, I think Michael Nesmith was a good musician, but the rest kind of morphed into that and got better. Uh, yeah. Mickey, Mickey Dolan's had to learn to play the drums, and he did. Circus and, Boy. Yeah, I remember him way back then. I think was, he was called Corky. Corky, yes, yeah, exactly. Circus boy. Yeah. Now, I love the monkeys, and I'll yeah. argue the monkeys all day long. They should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, yeah. uh, Mike Nesmith, one of the jewels of music. Uh, check out his solo career. But a lot of people hated the monkeys. A lot of people hated the Munsters, which were fonder later on. And it's funny how that went into reruns, things like that. They had a lot of good songs, yeah. a lot of good music. But how old were you when the monkeys came out? 66, you were eh, about high, into high school days. Right, yeah. So it was probably kind of like how I felt in high school about the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and stuff. I had no time for that kind of stuff. <laughs> no time for Backstreet Boys. Get them out of here. Uh, I didn't care if they were larger or life than not, mm -hmm. but uh, I was not going to listen to the Backstreet Boys. Probably you felt the same way around the monkeys. Probably. You were saying, give me the King Crimson. That's what you said at the time, probably. Yeah, they were down the road away. <laughs> oh, okay, down yeah. the road. You said, I yeah. want to be in the court of the Crimson King, yeah, is what you were hoping yeah. for. And that album cover always creeped me out. I always look at it, and you had a cassette back then in the 80s yeah. that you listened to. And then you to. jumped into Led Zeppelin by 1968, 69. Yeah. They, were, they were great. Led Zeppelin, no Deep Purple. Uh, I'll go all day. I'll say Deep Purple over Led Zeppelin all day oh. long. Uh, uh, anyways, let's get back to Herman Munster. Yeah. These always go off the rails, like we said, but let's look at the accessories for old Herman first, and I'll look at them, and I'll pass them to you. So we get Herman Munster, Yowza Baby, uh, what's that say? Electroshock Daddy-O. Have you ever uttered the words Daddy-O in your life? Uh, hey, no. Daddy-O. That goes back to a song <laughs> called Charlie Brown, Who Char Called the Teacher Daddy-O. <laughs> okay. And in those one. days, to call the teacher Daddy-O would get you in, put in prison. Suspended? You'd be in you'd prison. Be in trouble? That's right. So you never used any of that no, hip I jive I like Daddy-O? No, I never called the teacher Daddy-O. Uh -uh. So this is Herman. He was in the movie. He had a little bit of a music career going on. There was even a scene where him and Lily were like uh, Sonny and Cher. And I look at this, and it's got a little bit of that Sonny Bono uh -huh. kind of furry vest. That's really, that is recognizable, yeah. You know, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. From that famous... Uh, Sonny and Cher thing. Exactly. How did you feel about Sonny and Cher back in the day? Uh, I really don't feel about them. Yeah, no. I agree. No, did no. nothing for me. No. Nothing for me at all. No, I wasn't a follower there. I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, there's the record. I oh. like how this feels. It's nice and hard. It's not just like a paper one. A lot of times you get paper mm -hmm. stuff. This isn't breaking. You could reuse this somewhere else. But there it is. Very I would nice. love to love to hear that album. And that album cover looks like something out of White Zombie. Of course, Rob Zombie almost looks like something out of the uh, back in the day hmm. with uh, Rob Zombie. And then we get a novel. Oh, a novel. Wow. And we know who that is. You know that face right off the bat. It's old Edgar Allan Poe, mm -hmm. one of the all-time greats. Uh, the Horror of Poe, it says. So it's a little book. Now, once again, we talk about this a lot in a lot of these uh, action figure review videos. A perfect accessory. You can put this with your Ninja Turtles, Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. You can have a uh, Bazooka or um, Alpine or whoever in G.I. Joe sitting back reading a little <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe if you wanted to. But I do like that idea there. Then we get some extra hands, and the hands have it. You guys know I'm all about the hands here. We got the two splayed out open hands for Herman Munster. They come stock out of the package here. Then we get two more splayed out hands, but I guess these are kind of like holding the record, holding the book hands, so we got those. All right. And then, of course, we got Herman Munster. You've got to have two fists of fury. You have to. <laughs> you never know when Herman might have to break down a door and do one of those things. And that's about it, though. Herman, a big, big dude. And Fred Gwynn, he was probably 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, he was 6'5". Six, 6'5". Yeah. Oh, we're dating him. He's not no. as tall. So you'd, no. he'd be, you'd be looking down to old Fred Gwynn. A Gwyn. little bit, yeah. You, you know, in another lifetime, you could have played Fred Gwynn as a <laughs> and Frankenstein. You could have done it. I you, missed my calling. You missed your calling. It's all you about know? the timing. It yeah. really is. I mean, you talked about back in the day, you go to those AWA shows back in Minnesota. You went like once or twice, you know, and wrestling was never your thing back then. Uh, unless you were hanging out, drinking a couple beers with Marty O'Neill back at the uh, bar or something. But I, I don't recall that, but maybe it was the beer. I don't know. <laughs> But you you could have probably been a professional wrestler very easily if you wanted to be. At six foot eight, especially back then, they would have had you squaring off with you could have been the giant of the Midwest. The Andre the Giant of the Midwest. In those days I weighed two hundred and sixty pounds. I could have been. You could have been six I eight. I could have added a few more. You could have. Yeah. You could have really added some more. And right. I guarantee it, uh, Vern Gagne and the crew at AWA, they would have loved you. They would have had you your buddy Chris Taylor. You guys you could have been in that same class with Chris Taylor, Rick Flair. Uh, your old friend Bob Remus, uh, <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter. You could have been in that. It was right up the road. And just imagine, you could have been the giant of the Midwest. They would have had you wrestle in Ernie Lamb. And I met Chris Taylor. You did, yeah. yes. I, I, when he was going to Iowa State. So. He was as big around as you were tall. He was huge. He was 6'5", 340 pounds. But the nicest guy you ever met. Yeah. 
He was he was a sweetheart. I always heard yeah, that he was. But uh, then you know, I think he, him, and Ric Flair, they had their first professional wrestling match together. Oh. Crazy, crazy oh. times. But you could have been that giant of the Midwest. You missed your calling. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Then I would have been a second generation wrestler. Probably oh, wow. what would have happened. And I would have been like a young Eric Watts to like Bill Watts or something. It was said, "Oh, there's Kyle. He means well, but you know his dad was six foot eight, and he's only six foot one, and oh, it just would have been. It would have been a tough second generation wrestling run for me. So maybe it's best it didn't happen. You're, be you're better off without any nepotism right. in your life. <laughs> yes, exactly yeah. right. Exactly. Make right. it on your own. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I've heard that before. Well, we got two fists of fury for Herman Munster, but Herman, not a guy that's really going to throw fists. He was a lovable giant. He was. I don't, you know, a lot of people would be scared and intimidated in the show, and we keep talking back to the show. We should really talk the movie, but it's all, all things Munster. There was one episode he was in the ring fighting someone. I remember yes. that. And he ended up. Winning, Boxing. winning by default somehow or whatever. Yeah, well, and it's crazy to me NECA hasn't released an old school Munsters. Uh, maybe they'll get to it eventually. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. But let's look at the heads here on old Herman Munster. And there it is. We got two heads. So we got one playful side eye with the tongue sticking out. And then we got a very happy-go-lucky Herman Munster head here with just a nice smile there. A smile some might say you could set your watch to. I would say that right there. Uh, but two good heads, I think, for what it represents and the character it represents right. on the box. Hey, it looks like it to me. It looks dangerously enough to look like Fred Gwynn. And at the end of the day, I guarantee, people that know the old monsters, new monsters, don't know any monsters, well, they'd have to know some monsters. But you said, hey, who is this? A lot of people might say Frankenstein, but a lot of people would say, oh, that's Herman Munster. I think people would know that's Herman Munster. If you're familiar with the Munsters at all, they might not say movie, but they'll think this is the TV. So I think it gets the job done as far as that goes. But anyways, I think it is a really, really good head sculpt from the character in the movie. Uh, you got the usual uh, bolts, or what do you call those things? Staples on the yeah, top of the head. Right. You got those. You got the bolts on the neck. You got a little bit of that, I don't know if that's blood or a vein on the side there. Uh, but it definitely looks like Herman Munster, which is a take on Frankenstein, of course. Now, the skin tone color, what do you think about this? It's like a teal, I would say. I would, yeah. So it's an interesting take on Frankenstein. Of course, he was black and white back in the day. Mm -hmm. He was black and white. I can't remember. There was a color. Was the movie, Munster's movie, the original Munster's Coat, Go Home or Come Home, wasn't that in color? Or was That, that black was white? in color. And I can't remember what his skin tone color was. Was it more of a green or a gray? I think more of a greenish gray than so, teal, but... And, this movie it might have been. I didn't and fitting see it. with Rob Zombie, this movie, it, it makes it more vibrant, more colorful. Mm. And it's got a very crazy kind of color hue to the Munsters movie. Mm. Almost the antithesis of the black and white is ah. almost what it is. So it's like electro, 60s, kind of crazy, zany color. So that fits in on brand here. But it really does pop, especially against the black and everything mm. else. You get the color there. And then we talked about the Sonny Bono like uh, fur vest kind of going on. But also, what movie was it? Uh, Frankenstein vs. the Wolfman. Frankenstein wore the fur vest. One of the old Universal movies. Isn't he wearing a fur vest right. in one of those? Yeah, I think it, it was that one. That's Come right. On. And uh, in the uh, Bela Lugosi character, uh, Igor, that was alongside in those movies, was wearing something similar okay. to that. So yeah, it's, it's kind of on point there, but it looks a little bit fashionable. And then he's got, I don't know what you call those pants, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, laced here on the side. I don't know what you would call those. And, and these shoes, definitely uh, something out of the 70s. Those Big are some time. platform shoes. So it makes me feel like uh, uh, Herman Munster was tall, but maybe uh, cheated a little <laughs> bit. Like uh, Glenn Jacobs Kane. You remember the wrestler Kane, of course? Yeah. Now, he used to wear lifts in his shoes as well to make himself a little bit taller. Yeah. And he was already a big dude, like six foot eight. but you put something like this on... Hey, you're over seven feet tall right there. So uh, very interesting platform shoes, a little bit obnoxious, I would yeah. say. Pretty big. I, I think I know the answer to this, but we're going to ask it. Dad, did you ever own platform shoes? Uh, no. You had no reason to. You no, had no I need. Didn't. No, I was tall. Have enough. you ever said, gosh, I wish I was just a little bit taller? Have you uh, ever said that? After I saw, you know, some of the contracts, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar signed, yeah, yeah. That's I true. Did. I guess I in your know. basketball life and stuff like that, playing uh, college basketball, you probably said, you know, if I was just like three inches taller, four inches taller, I don't know. Who, out of all the old uh, uh, contemporaries in the basketball game back then, if you had to go one-on-one -on -one with anybody, who would you want to play against the most one-on-one -on -one back then? Oh boy, for, you know, just to experience it or yeah. to get humiliated? I, uh, either sure. or. Oh. Just to experience well, what, it. I'll tell you, one of the toughest... Toughest ball players I would think to play against was Earl Monroe. 
Earl the Pearl Monroe. If, if you want to look at the highlight films of Earl Monroe, you'll see moves you've never seen. That's a by deep cut. Ever. And Earl Monroe, I heard a lot about. I had some cards of him back mm -hmm. in the day. I remember you obviously talked about him, but mm -hmm. he's kind of a lost soldier in the. You don't hear a lot of Earl Monroe talk he's anymore. He's still around. They, you know, he's. I mean, but as far as uh, when they talk about the all-time greats, you don't mm -hmm. hear a lot of Earl Monroe talk. He didn't have the championships others had, yeah. but if if you. He's a guy who could beat anyone on any playground or any gym in America one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, all those in, playgrounds. In his day. In his day. <laughs> you used to like to play prison rules, I remember, on the old playground uh, <laughs> against me at Carroll. We'd play prison rules, and it was tough. It was it was bloody noses. It was a mess. But mm -hmm. uh, Pistol Pete Maravich, another guy you don't right. hear a lot about anymore uh, so much, but way ahead of his time. And, yep, you know, one of my all-time favorites, and do you think you could beat him one-on-one? -on -one? Rick Barry. Mm. What about that under uh, the old? Uh, remember he used to <laughs> do that. Throws, I yeah. couldn't believe that. Couldn't yeah. believe that. He used to be very know. good. I always wanted to go in the three point competition against Craig Hodges. You remember Craig Hodges for the Chicago Bulls? I do. Man, that guy was lights out at the three point <laughs> line. There was that All Star break where they did the three point contest that one year, where the Bulls dropped him off the team, and he had to play in the three point contest in just an NBA jersey. Everybody else had to wear their stuff, but he was grandfathered in, and he was just lights out that night. Him and Mark Price. That's another great one. One of my all time favorites, of uh -oh. course. Anyways, off the basketball, back to Herman Munster here. Let's walk through the articulation real quick for old Herman. Arms, a little bit limited here. You're not going to get all the way around in the traditional way because of his big fur vest going on, so we've got limitations. But uh, Fred Gwynn, Herman Munster, Frankenstein, not necessarily Spider-Man. You probably don't need all that articulation. Uh, you got the head back and forth side to side, so you got the ball joint down at the bottom of the neck and the head, so you got extra posability out of that head which is really, really nice. You do get single jointed elbows. Once again, I feel that's all you really do need. Hands going to be removable side to side. You got the big old arms there. Uh, the big kind of baggy shirt that's torn and ripped. Very on brand for the Munsters. You do get a little waist articulation action right here. So you get the back and forth there. He can do those big old Herman <laughs> Munster splits if he needs to jump over a, a hearse or something like that or over Grandpa. And uh, then you do get a big knee there, single jointed once again. And then you get the ankles back and forth, side to side, back and forth. And the big old platform boots. Hmm. So very interesting here. Now, does he fit on a ringside collectible stand? A Mattel one, of course. We'll see if he fits. I guess yes. Oh, what do you know? He, does. You do. he fits. Look at that. Use discount code Kyle. Save yourself 10%. Fits perfectly, but I don't know if you necessarily need a stand for him. Oh, He's you do. Got, he does have big feet. He does he got big, big feet. Shoes. I don't know. I mean, you think you might need a stand for him. You very possibly will. Herman taking his last stand. So, to me, a good figure. Any thoughts from you? I think it's okay for what it is. Is this going to set the world on fire? Does everybody love this movie? Absolutely not. But take the movie out of it. Take that out of it. If you like Frankenstein, you like horror movies, you like this, or even kind of like the monsters at all, it works. It works for me. It's not like it's a thousand dollar investment either. You know, you're looking around thirty dollars. It is what it is. But what are your thoughts on this? What do you think? Well, I think I'm a little bit prejudiced because to me, I think of Fred Gwynn. That doesn't quite look like Fred Gwynn, uh, but I think it's a good representation of the character or the actor who played this part in the movie. I think you need to leave your prejudices at the door. <laughs> I think that's what you do. No, I it's get what you're do. saying. I get what you're saying. So I think that the final verdict here is uh, when I'm out on the hunt this week, oh, we got to be out on the hunt every week. Remember those weeks of the hunt? You used to get off work and we'd go hunting. Uh, you don't want me to pick you up one of these is what no, you would say. No, I don't think I would. <laughs> he doesn't need He's going to no. pass. But if NECA wants to send him one in the mail, you would take it. <laughs> Why, sure. I don't think they're going to do it. They're not doing it for me. I don't know if they'll do it for you. But who knows? They might. They might. Yeah. But uh, how about we grab uh, the old G Frankenstein? I guess this is Frankenstein all day long all right. for you right here. Right. But look at that height difference. He oh, wow. towers. He's not wearing the same uh, lift shoes. It's true. You put that lift in there. You put yeah, that through the go. same. It's all about that lift. But I wonder if we can do one of these here. Right there. You pop that off. Oh, oh. boy. Business just picked up right here oh, at the boy. table. There it is. Oh, how about that? Boris go. Karloff never looks so good. <laughs> you can do some switching of the heads if you really want to. Regular there Frankenstein and disco Frankenstein. Oh, boy, this doesn't work at all with the colors. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Sure. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that looks a little bit strange. I think this one looks better with this head yeah, he than this. It looks like he's wearing a turtleneck. Yeah, it just looks a little strange. 
But, you know, it's all about fun at the end of the day. Come on, <laughs> come on, Boris. Get on that stand. But, yeah, uh, it's not going to be for everybody. And a lot of people are taking their prejudices, which we said we should yeah, leave at the door. That's right. But they're taking their prejudices against the movie, against the figure. And I guess that it, it makes sense because you don't like the movie. Why would you like the figure? But if you like Frankenstein, you like the monsters, <laughs> you like a little bit of zaniness and a little something different, this is for you. But it's not going to be for everybody at the end of the day, as we saw right here. So there it is. That is Frankenstein. Any final thoughts on it? No, I, I enjoyed it. it, was, it, it very interesting depiction. Do you think you'll come back for Grandpa Munster <laughs> unboxing? Uh, we'll see. I, I did catch some photos of that somewhere on uh, out of the movie or whatnot, and he, he really doesn't look like old Al. Uh, Al Lewis. Grandpa Al, Al Lewis. Lewis. Grandpa yeah grandpa uh, and lily monsters. is way off the rails too i think that's going to be the worst one so we'll see yeah. i'm not sure I, I have to think those are coming out fairly soon so i guess mm. we'll stay tuned for all that mm. but uh we'll see i'll let you know i will uh, extend the invitation i'll send you a postcard in the mail very good perfect I'll right, down the street, to right down the street well that's all that's uh herman munster of course let me know your thoughts in the comments down below don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the old notification bell we got videos every single day and even more content and early access to videos like this over on the patreon dad our creature from the black lagoon movie uh unboxing has been on patreon for like three months we filmed that like oh, wow. three months ago it's been on patreon one of these days will be on traditional youtube but you get really early access to a lot of these videos as a patreon member of course don't forget to support the channel over at the old patreon and at prowrestlingtees.com search kyle peterson don't forget social media sir paul 64 is where you're gonna find me on twitter instagram the underscore kyle underscore peterson dad where are they gonna find you the golf course probably or Parts unknown. <laughs> Parts unknown. Oh, no. Beautiful this time of year, though. Parts unknown. Go. But I guess we'll look to you at the golf course. Once the weather is getting closer and closer, it's going to be harder to track you down. That is for sure. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. But, Dad, thank you once again for coming over to talk Herman thank Munster you. with Appreciate me. Appreciate it. And we'll be back next time. So for Herman Munster, the Munsters everywhere, and my dad, I am Kyle. And I'll see you guys all real soon.